Should we play anything? No. Just cold start. Like a cold start. It's a cold start, so no music. We're just this we this is a this Ironically. <laughs> no music for one of the biggest musical episodes of our our life. <laughs> of everyone's life. It's been worldwide. Like, really. I mean, this is like I mean, Molly's melodrama dreamed of moments <laughs> like this. You know, an exclusive well, it's not even necessarily a premiere because we're not actually going to play yeah. your song, Josh. We'll point them in the direction, obviously. We will, of course. It, but. Yeah, definitely. Well, should we... Let's talk about what's going on. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, probably a good place to start is to talk about why on earth there's a bonus episode that has talks about me having a song. Yeah. Because it might be, for some people listening, they might know why we're here, but others... I think for most people, I think they'd be very confused. If you've been to the live show, you know exactly what's happening. Yeah. Uh, and if you are an avid fan who's listened to all the episodes, you'll, you'll probably have an idea. But Josh, do you want to explain? Yeah. So when we first came up with the tea house cards, we were just doing them between the three of us. Vulnerability tea house cards. Yeah, vulnerability tea house now. cards. Yeah, available now to buy <laughs> yeah, on the website. Exactly. It's not about them this episode, but <laughs> just as a side note, you can purchase them. Still available full price. <laughs> Yep, for an extended time, yeah. full price. <laughs> um, when we first started doing them, we didn't get guests in. It was just you, the three of us, you, yep. Ryan and myself. And I think you guys had already done yours because I hadn't been on the mic on this show very much at that stage. And I had to do my first card. And it was probably the most I'd ever had to speak on the show to that point. So I was very nervous uh, about it. And I pulled a card uh, that found me telling this story and I thought maybe we could play the story, mm. the original yeah. audio from that episode rather than me trying to retell the story itself. Yeah. This would be 12 years ago. I was about 22, I think. Um, me and Sophie had only been dating for a while and she invited me to a party with a friend of hers and I've just ended up talking to a group of people I'd never met before. There's about 10 of us sort of standing in a circle having drinks outside, probably around a fireplace or something like that. And this guy next to me was pretty brazen and he kind of just leant forward and goes, what's that? And grabbed a book out of my pocket. And I was in a, um, I was in a band at the time and was really trying to, I thought music was the thing for me. And as soon as he grabbed it, my heart sank. Cause I'm like, Oh, they're me trying to write song lyrics. Wow. Oh. Yeah. And he opens it up. A, it's a little notebook, little notebook. And he opened it up and started reading them aloud. He was like, I think these might, is this like poetry or lyrics or something? And then he started laughing at them. And then he's like, oh, this is amazing. And he then passed it to the person next to him. And the notebook got passed around the circle to every single person in the, in the circle. And everyone read a page from the notebook and mm-hmm. took the piss out of how bad the lyrics were yeah. and how bad the poetry was. Oh. And then it ended up back on me. And I read a page <laughs> and took the piss out of my own wow. attempt oh. to write. Um, I think it's had a permanently detrimental effect on me, uh, thing on me because I've never really wanted to ever write anything of my own. Wow. Because mm. I just feel that it's all going to be that bad. Yeah. And it's, it's going to get passed around a circle and people are going to laugh at it. It's just, yeah, I, I've, yeah, I don't know. I just can't seem to write anything, even though I'd like to, but I just can't do anything of my own. And I feel like it stems from that. From that moment. So that was, that was then. That was uh, a couple of years ago now that yeah. we talked about that. And so what's happened since then, Josh? Well, um, for a long time after that, nothing really happened. Mm. Um, and then we decided to do this live show. And when we went away... This is the live um, stage show that we that been we've been touring, touring around the country. Yeah. Yep. And we'll tour again soon. Yep. Um, very soon. I think in a week when this episode comes out um, right. or two. Yeah. So we went away to try and plan what this live show was going to be. We sort of booked in the live show, told everyone we were doing it and had no idea what the show was going to be. So we went away and tried to write the show. And I can't remember whose idea it was, but an idea was put forward that as an act of vulnerability, maybe I should try and write lyrics for a song and perform a song. Which you hadn't done. You hadn't done an original song since that moment that we just played the clip. No, well, yeah, and I've never really, I mean, I've written musical, like guitar parts and stuff like that in bands I've been in, but I've never written, the key was I've never written lyrics for a song oh, yeah. and had a complete song that was mine yeah. that I'd written lyrics for because I couldn't face writing lyrics again really after that yeah. that moment. 
Um, and it's also significant just to understand that like this is, I think for a long time, what you really wanted to do with your life up until that happened, that was the, that's what you wanted to do more than anything. Yeah, you didn't grow up wanting to be a podcaster. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> still still trying is... to get out of it, to be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good point. And, and I kind of wanted to do that for 10 years after that as well. But I, I just couldn't, couldn't get back to that I place. I couldn't bring, I could write musical parts because that felt safe and I could hide behind that a bit. But I couldn't bring myself to do the much more vulnerable and courageous thing of writing lyrics and put myself out there more and write a song that was just me with the lyrics because it always felt like such a, still does actually, such a huge mountain to climb to say these are lyrics and this is a song that I'm going to stand by as mine yep. and me. It, it, it is one of the most, like, you know, whenever I see a stand-up comedian do stand, like perform their stand-up, that is one of the most vulnerable things you can do. And I think sitting alongside that is someone performing a song that they've written, especially like with vulnerable lyrics about their life, because it is you saying, like you just said, you're standing by, this is what I think is a good song. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's um, well, that's what certainly what it felt like. Um, and it feels a bit different now, actually, weirdly. Mm -hmm. But mm. and maybe we can talk more about that later. But I, yeah. I, I, so came up with that idea, and it was a lot harder than I expected. I said, "Yep, I'm, I'm a new man. I can do this. I've got, I'm a different person now." Um, and I managed to do it, but it wasn't easy. And I played a song at our live shows. Um, and well, to to, to st take a step back mm, from that, yeah. um, we were rehearsing, like we were doing our rehearsals in this strange little hall around yeah. the corner, which I think Community used to... Hall. Community Emily, Town Emily Hall. Emily Baker Hall. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Hugh and I were kind of eagerly, and Bridge, like the three of us, we were all like eagerly so excited to hear what you'd come up with because you would update us every now and again. But even before that, do you remember I asked you, I, I sent you a message saying, hey, just wondering, like, mm -hmm. no pressure at all, but how's the song coming along? Knowing we had a couple of months till... Yeah. And that was not good for you. I remember you sort of really spiralled after yeah. that message. Yeah, yeah. Because you just weren't having any luck at that point. No, there was. I had a few hurdles along the way. To be honest, I, that might have been a couple of months before, but I didn't actually have anything until. And you guys were so kind and so generous, and such a, it's such a wonderful group of people to work with that I never felt pressured from you guys. But I was starting to think, geez, the show's like three weeks away, and I don't really have anything. Was it that close? Three <laughs> it weeks. It was pretty close. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I it reckon was it was about three weeks when I played it to you guys. Um, okay. I, I, for some reason, I had this, I just had this faith. Yeah, me too. That it would, it'll happen. It'll just come together. I'm glad you guys did. I did at the start and I didn't by the end. But um, anyway, so I, I played it to you guys, which was a huge moment in my life that I don't think I'll ever forget. And um, and then... No, no way. No. <laughs> I was in tears like yeah, you were 30 actually. seconds in. Yeah. Um, and, then I st and then we played it live in the show and people... I think it worked in the show and a few people afterwards said they wanted to hear it, like wanted to hear it up on a Spotify. Few people. Just a few. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the main, it's the main bit of feedback after the show. Yeah, great, great show. Where can we get the song, please? <laughs> so yeah. I've gone away and recorded the song um, with some incredible musicians. Uh, that, because you were performing it. You performed it acoustic basically yeah. for around Australia with our show. And, yeah. But, but, but now it's... You've actually gone and written more musical parts to it with other people, and and yeah, and I went to a, like a fancy proper studio where real professional musicians work, mm. and uh, had... so we, and we haven't heard this yet. So yeah. Ryan and I have not heard this. Like it's been torturous because we knew we wanted to wait till we recorded this episode to kind of yeah. like so we could talk about it in the moment because it's pretty different to what was played live. Right. Yeah. So so how different because I love I really love the acoustic original version so much. I'm expecting thrash metal but uh, who knows, you know, thrash I'm metal. ready to be surprised. <laughs> so what's going to happen so we're going to so Hugh and I are going to listen to it now, not on the podcast. Um, but if you want to listen to it, you, it's out now, isn't it, Josh? Yeah, isn't out it? now. So you can go to spot. This is a weird thing to say, but I guess you just look up my name in Spotify <laughs> or YouTube for the video clip or anywhere really that you um, choose to listen to music. It should be there. Wow. Maybe we can put a link in the show notes. Definitely. But you could probably look up my name and, and the title of the song. But it's on all the streaming services, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It'll be everywhere you can listen to music. Yep. It'll be there. Yeah. Um, and do you guys know the title of the song? No, oh, no, I don't, I don't think I do. Because do I? I didn't come up with the title until uh, me, the producer suggested. Oh yeah, it, what's the title? What's the song called? We were here. Ooh. 
Okay. Shit, I can't believe it. I'm excited. Look at us. So if you'd like to listen to the song now, just yes. like Ryan and I are about, about to, to yep. press pause on this episode, go to Spotify, have a listen, and then you can come back and listen to the second half of this episode. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you don't listen to it now, you're about to hear a whoosh and then another whoosh and you'll be straight into the second half of the episode. Is there any other context we need? Any other? Um, I, only that uh, I guess that I wrote this song for my family. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know Josh. how you've done that. I don't understand. <laughs> Computers, mate. <laughs> Josh, AI. that that is incredible. Oh, Thanks. I love it. Thank you. It is oh. extraordinary. That is a yeah. It's a it's a I don't a, know what to say. Oh, when I want to just listen to it again straight away. I mean, I was I think during listening I'm just thinking I'm sort of like I guess because I'm being distracted by the thought of you doing it. Like I'm thinking of oh, you yeah. recording it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to listening to it another hundred times <laughs> to really let it sink oh, in. I can't wait to watch it. I know you've done a film clip as well. Oh, it's just. It's a weird thing to sit here and play it to other people actually. Very surreal. Yeah. People whose opinions I treasure. But the, <laughs> I mean, the fact you've just done that with where you've come from and, and the journey you've been on, it's. Yeah. It's. I mean, the song is incredible and that's very much the focus of now is how amazing it is. But as a side note, the fact you've actually written music and then gone away and and then, I mean, it's really because everyone's right. Everyone kept saying I need to hear that again. Mm. That's kind of why you've gone and done this. Yeah. And so you're even more vulnerable to have more people listen to it. So just. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like conscious of not like just heaping prey, like <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's, it's just, it's so beautiful. And oh, and it's uh, it's just very. I mean, the whole concept of the fact that you've recorded a song, considering the story mm. and where it's come from, just a very, very. Uh, I don't know. It's a very moving. Well, thing. It's, it's surreal to have a recording like that, and to have worked with the people of that caliber to pull it together, um, and the way that they did it, uh, they were incredible to work with. But the actual process of writing the original song was uh, a lot more difficult than I expected it to be. Mm. Like I feel like I'm a genuinely a different human being to what I was when that happened to me when I was 21 or two. And um, so I thought, oh, yeah, I'm, I've got a lot more. I'm, I'm 36, 35, 36. Um, in your 30s. In your 30s, yeah. yeah. I was trying mid, to mid, remember mid, it. No, I was 30, definitely 36 when I wrote it. Um, and I thought all that stuff would be behind me. But it was, as soon as I started to try and write again, every, like, all the negativity just came, like, flooding back and rushing back. I was trying to write, like, I was writing, like, notes, trying to write lyrics in a book and Soph was getting very stressed because the show was getting close and she's like, you really need to write this song. <laughs> she was putting a bit more pressure on than you guys because it was worrying her. And then I I think it was, like, a week before that performance with you guys, I to you guys where I played it for the first time I came in here, and I was actually sitting on in the chair I'm sitting at now where we record the thing by myself. And I'm like, I just, I'm not going to leave this room till I've done the song. And I remember sitting in here just like crying for about 20 minutes, <laughs> like get, coming up with lyrics, crying in like, oh, sorry, despair that I couldn't write anything. But then when I came up with a certain lyric in the song, I cried out of relief, I think, because I felt like for the first time, and I was playing it and singing it and crying because for the first time I've ever, I was like, this is, this is what I feel and it's coming out the way I want it to come out in. Mm. And up until that point, I think I'd always tried, I'd never pushed through the pain of not being able to do something and, and that feeling of being useless and come out the other side and, and seeing that there was actually good stuff at the end of that. Mm. And you can, that I could push through that and there was a validation of, oh no, there is something there. You just, For me, maybe, maybe I've just got to go through that. I have to go through the pain of thinking it's all shit, getting all that. I think you said once, because I said all the ideas I'm coming up with are shit, you said something like, well, that's part of the process. You've got to get the, sometimes you just got to get the crap stuff out. Well, the good ones don't feel as good without the shit ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Yeah, and then the song kind of felt like, well, it's not perfect like anything, but this feels like an authentic, this feels authentic. It doesn't feel like I'm trying to sound like anyone else. It doesn't sound like I'm going to trying to be like anyone else, which I'd always found that everything I've done. And so I, I didn't really care if it was good or not. 
to be honest, which is a weird place to be as well. Cause I, it's, um, in the past writing music, I think I really cared and wanted external validation. I wanted exactly what just happened before. Mm. Um, but this time I was like, I don't really care because I know that this is how I feel and this is probably about as good as I've got in me at this point in my life and that's that's got to be enough. It's a, Well, it's such a good place to be, but also it is, I think, I hope that when people listen to the song, they think about, I think because I think the story behind it is so important. It's not necessary, but I think it is such an important part because obviously when, we were, when you were rec- uh, performing it in the, theaters when we're in, you know in front of sometimes like 2000 people there were people because it was the very end of the show mm. uh and will continue to be in the live shows that we we do yeah. uh but uh people are walking out with tears down their face mm. um and it certainly wasn't because uh, we walked off stage it, <laughs> it was because of the song <laughs> it was because of the song yeah. you just played uh it really really moved a lot of people and this is really exciting that now lots of people are going to be able to hear it yeah, I, it was like there's many special moments from the live tour, but being able to, because it's the end of the show, for Ryan and other shows finished, we get to walk off and then with Bridget, the three of us would come out and just watch you from side to stage. It was such a joy and a privilege to be watching you perform that music and seeing the impact it was having on people as well was just not surprising, but it was beautiful to watch. That that uh, Having people react to the music was, um, whether they're reacting to the story or the music, I'm not sure, but either way, it was pretty... Uh, Yeah, I don't think I'll ever forget that. That was Mm. pretty profound and pretty amazing. And to all the people who did ask you, when are you going to release it? Now. Now. (laughs) Now. (laughs) Yeah. He's released it now. It took a while. Sorry, guys, but it's out. And um, I also, I really do want to thank Finn Keane, who's the producer, who's this incredible producer, Richard Bradbeer and Dave Williams on uh, bass and drums, respectively, and uh, Nick Van Kylenberg, um, our cousin, plays uh, a few instruments on it, but keys. It, so, would, it would be weird for us to do anything without a Van Kylenberg involved. <laughs> yeah, an extra one. <laughs> an extra Van Kylenberg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Nick's, Nick's a genius. He's a genius, um, as was all, all four of the guys that worked on this. And I should also, huge thanks to Beck Sutherland and Michael Lynch for all their mm-hmm. help and support uh, guiding me through this whole process. They've been incredible, so thank you. I've, I've enjoyed the barrage of text messages from Beck Sutherland, mm-hmm. who is our manager from Jubilee Street Management, just telling me, how ridiculously good this song is yep. when we hadn't heard it. So um, I'm happy to say I've heard it now. Not Beck. wanting to lead the witness, but she is an industry professional that knows what she's talking about. So yep. <laughs> take that for what it's worth. Yep. <laughs> wow. Congratulations, Josh. That's incredible. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, guys. congratulations, mate. It's um, just so stoked for you. Spotify, Apple Music, um, all the places. JB Hi Fi, brush, <laughs> brushes, brushes, <laughs> sanity. Uh, <laughs> all of them. Yeah. All the big Before spots. Performing on Ho Ho Saturday. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's you, Tommy Emmanuel. I think both this Saturday. <laughs> okay, well, Josh, well done. I'm going to go download it now. I'm very, very excited for you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for everyone.